So guys, let's first see the time lapses on this printer and then I will show you how I've made them. What's up my friends, welcome back! So first of all, this won't be a project video as I usually do, but I didn't have time to finish my project video about the smart glasses multimeter, but you will have that the next weekend, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, I just wanted to share an extra video because I was making some time lapses with my resin 3D printer, which by the way has a great quality, and I just want to show you how to make those time lapses because it's not that easy as just putting the camera and click record. So let's just start it. So guys, if you want to make a cool time lapse as you have now on your screen with very smooth movement and take the picture exactly at the moment when you change from one layer to the next without the picture moving around, well, you need a digital camera that has a remote for the shutter button. So you can connect here a shutter button on this input and each time that you press that, press that button, it will take a picture. In that way, you can uh, synchronize the picture with the moving or your axis so each time you change the layer, you will take a picture. Okay, so here I have my camera and the input jack of the shutter is connected. So it, each time that I touch these wires, as you can see, it will take a picture. So I touch the wires, I touch the wires. So let me show you how you would do this with a normal FDM printer. So basically with a normal FDM printer, what I usually do is to place a, an end stop switch here on this axis and I placed a small G code that will make the printer after each layer go to the position 00, zero so it will touch that button so when you touch the button you will take the picture in that way the print is always in the same spot so it will move gradually upwards and you make a cool time lapse but with the resin printer we don't have that we don't have the axis that would touch the button so we need to activate the switch using the UV light inside of the printer. So for that I've made this very small module here with an LDR which is a light dependent resistor. So this resistor will change its resistance depending on the light. And that could be, well, normal light but also the UV light that we have inside. So we can connect that to this module which is just an amplifier 
and each time we have we detect the UV light, we activate the output. You connect that output to a transistor, and that transistor will act like a switch between the wires of your camera. And that's how each time that you see light here, you will activate the shutter. So all we have to do is to place this small LDR sensor inside of the printer through some hole that we have behind and make sure that this is, is in front of the UV light uh, LEDs inside. And for now, the only problem that I have is that at this output from the camera, we can get five volts because this has a pull up. So that means that we have a resistor connected to five volts, which, which is actually 3.8 volts because that's the voltage of my camera. So if you have a pull up, which is a resistor that will limit the current, you can supply the circuit. So for now, this module here will be supplied with an external power supply at 3.3 volts or 3.8 volts. Let me show you an example. So I'm not sure if you can see here, but this LED is the output and now, right now it's turned off. So let me just simulate the light with my lantern here from my smartphone. So you will see that each time that I place, the, place this LD, uh, LDR in front of the light, that LED will turn on. So look, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. So uh, we will do the same, but with the UV light inside of the printer, we place this LED with this LDR in front of the light. So each time that you change the layer, you will take a picture with this module. By the way, the camera shutter will activate with a connection to ground. So we can connect directly this output, which will be high to the camera. So we connect this output to a transistor first and this transistor to the collector. We connect the pin, the input pin and to the emitter, we collect, connect ground. In that way, each time this output is high, the transistor will be activated and will make a connection to ground. And in that way, we take the picture. So here I have my printer, which I will turn on the UV light so we can make some tests. And here I have my camera, so you will see that each time that I put in, uh, in front this uh, LDR, in front of the light, it will take a picture. And by the way, I have my module here with a magnet, so I can glue it, I can uh, stick it to the printer. So let me just expose here for 30 seconds. So there is the UV light, so you look at this. Picture. Picture. So as you can see, actually, it will take the picture when you take it out from the light because that's when it will make connection to ground. Okay, so actually we have to stick this inside of the printer and for that we have a hole be, uh, behind. Okay, so I have the UV light on so I can make some tests. First I stick this here because it's made out of metal and we have a magnet. And now I'll stick this inside of the printer through these holes till I can see that the LED will turn on because of the UV light inside. So as you can see now, the LED is turned on, now it's off, now it's on, now it's off. So we have found a good spot. Okay, now the LED is on. Let me turn off the UV light and you will see that it will take a picture. There you have it. Now let's just put a print and see this process in work. Okay, so I have everything prepared. I have the module connected inside to the UV light. I have the jack input here, so as you can see, we have the light and each time the light will turn off, it will take a picture exactly when we change from one layer to the next. Just wait for another one. There you go. Let's see it from here. So look, exactly when the, uh, the light will turn off, it will take a picture. There you go. There you go. So of course, if your print will have like 2000 layers, it will take 2000 pictures, but those pictures will be in 4K. So you can stick the picture one frame after the other. And in that way, we'll have a very, very smooth uh, time lapse. So guys, that's how easy I can make my cool time lapses with my resin 3D printer. And by the way, at the end of the video, I'll put both time lapses that I have, or maybe even I will record one more. So you can see those, uh, they are actually in 4K because I'm taking the picture, which I actually uh, shoot it in 8K, but I'm rendering the video in 4K. So with that, we will have even more details. And by the way, you should use a good lens with a good focal length so you can have a lot of light. Also, you should have in mind that you shouldn't record with a natural light because natural light could change. You can have clouds or maybe um, the print will take too long. So you, it will go dark outside. So you don't want to mess with your light. It's better to use artificial light and have the same consistent light 
during the entire time lapse. So the difference between this time lapse and the normal time lapse will just place your camera to record to take a picture is each 20 seconds. I will show you that on the screen. With the normal one, where you take the picture each 20 seconds or 30 seconds, you will see that the picture is not taken uh, exactly at the moment where you, where you change the layer. So the, the axis will move around and that it, it's not as smooth as this one. But in this case, you will take the picture exactly when you change the layer. So that will make your time lapse uh, a lot smoother. Also, when you record a normal time lapse video, you will have the resolution of maybe full HD. Or if your camera can record 4K, well, you will have that resolution. But when you make a time lapse like this with uh, independent pictures, you can have the resolution of the pictures. And as you all know, a picture taken by this camera is, has a lot higher resolution than uh, a video. This can go up to, I think, 8K or maybe 16K. It has a lot more details. So in that way, you will have uh, very good details on your time lapse. By the way, this is my setup for very good light. I'm using this lens here, which has a 1.4 uh, aperture. So you get a lot of light. So you get uh, very good details. And also, since the time lapse will take maybe 9 hours, 10 hours, depending on the print, you will need to use an external battery. So what I have, you can buy it from eBay, are these batteries like this one, which have the same shape of your battery of your camera, but it has an input jack. So you can connect that to a transformer, which is connected to my uh, input uh, power. So in that way, you can have your battery forever and you won't have to worry about that. So guys, that was the video for today. Sorry that I don't have my project. I am very, very busy right now with a lot of projects, but you will have my next multimeter smart glasses tutorial the next weekend. So maybe I'll make a PCB with this, uh, this circuit here, which is not even a circuit, it's just a detector with a transistor. And maybe I'll share that with you in case that you want to make the same part and uh, just stick your cable inside of the printer and make your time lapses. So now I'll put those time lapses on your screen in 4K so you can enjoy. Keep up you guys.